Welcome Strategy Bell Gamers to another GBHL YouTube video. You are here with your GBHL channel host, GBHL James. And GBHL Jamie. Another mm -hmm. week's edition of Speak, Friend and Question. That's right, I've got loads of questions this week. Yeah. Loads. We must have been really interesting last week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it was the setting. I think it's the setting the fact that we're in a war gaming hall again. I know, and we're not we're not today, yeah. unfortunately. Darren got robbed. Yeah. Some of his models stolen, some of them broken, and just like people taking the mech a bit with the uh, kitchen. If you're watching this video, over the years, I've acquired a certain set of skills. I will find you, and I will kill you. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go straight to the questions, and we've got the Prancing Pony, sharer of all videos. Yes. <laughs> Ones from when we started, and we no longer remember. They pop up, and I think, who's that I'm sat next to? <laughs> Every single time. So the Prancing Pony, he's put, thanks for the suggestions, guys. What were we suggesting? I can't remember. I don't know. Uh, what do you think of buying uh, Kirkwood, oh, Mirkwood Ranger captains and using them as ordinary Mirkwood Rangers to make a full warband? I think as long as you've not got Mirkwood Ranger captain... Yeah, if you don't know where you're forced, but then, you know, well, yeah, I guess you, you're topping your warband up, but you're, you're paying like 15 quid almost to do that, so... Maybe just... Nice models, though. And then he's got flexibility, he could... Yeah. I think as long as you've not got a Mirkwood Ranger captain leading, leading. a warband... Yeah, yeah, you should be fine with that. Shouldn't be a problem. And then Jon Snow or Ragnar Lothbrok. Ragnar. Really? Better than Jon Snow, yeah. So much better. Yeah, and real. And real. And real. He's a real dude. Next up, we've got XTS Warzone. Cheers, making sure I sent it to the right person. Uh, no worries about timing. Thanks for the tips on my home room. Uh, actually, maybe that's about t shirts. Uh, no, no, that was about his game. Oh, yes, of course, yeah. Uh, now, thinking about Easterlings, I've got about 12 warriors with sword and bow. Uh, what else should I get? Thanks again, and uh, can't wait for more bat reps. Some heroes to lead them. Heroes, guys with the uh, spears that count as pikes. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good. Just uh, pick up some boxes of troops or look on the trade forums. East things pop up quite a bit. Yeah, you can get come all for quite cheap on, on eBay. Yeah. You know, get some get some decent heroes to lead your troops. Uh, but thanks again, and can't wait for more bat reps. Well, neither can we. We're, we're, we're on battle companies at the moment. Yeah. I've not had loads of people sort of volunteering to come down and do uh, battle reports with us. So if you want to come up and challenge the GBHL team to a battle report, let us know because we will find time. Especially if yeah. two people can make the journey. Then both of us can head down and... We can both have four. a game and then swap over. And that's four battle reports that we can get made in one sort of day, as it were, yeah. which is uh, very productive. I mean, I, I might even ask some of my opponents this weekend at East Greenstead, just some, yeah. as long as I'm, you know... You, you, you're confident you can finish the game quickly <laughs> don't no, you say I, we'll almost do like a turn review oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah try and almost turn review it like we are doing with the battle companies yeah, rather yeah. than filming the dice rolls and things um, and just see if any of the opponents wouldn't mind me doing that because it gets us some yeah. content yeah. what do you think give it, give it a go give it a go if my opponents are bothered then of course I won't do it they can do wrong and stop uh, okay, so next question is from Reuben1532. He's put, Hey fellas, when thinking about the hobby, I realise there are a lot of family pairings. Boromir and Faramir, Aragorn and Arathor, uh, Eowyn and Eoma, uh, Haldir and Rumir, and uh, so on and so on. Which pairing or group relatives in the SBG do you find the most powerful or versatile? And who do you think would best the rest of the family groups? That's a good question. Yeah. I really like sort of Thranduil. Legolas. Thrandu and Legolas is a very good call. Yeah. That's a very good call. Because they're both quite cheap and they both do a lot. relatively cheap and do a lot for your force. The game changes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, who else? I guess Elrond and his sons. The twins. The twins. That would be, be horrific. The twins. Elrond and his sons. Well, I came up on with... On horses, you're like... Oh, I came up with a 500 point list for that second day at um, our tournament. Destination oh, yeah, yeah. Stockport. Because uh, it looked like I was going to have to play a second day, which I did. And it was going to be a, a bit of a fun list. It was going to be the twins, because they were going to be painted up by Shadow and Flame, yep. which they have been. Elrond, unfortunately the Elrond that I sent, um, sent to Kev had loads of flash on it. And I didn't see this flash and just sprayed over it and started painting it. So he was like, I could not work with this model. <laughs> so he binned it and he's doing me another one. But I was going to do Elrond, the twins, Lindir... And Arwen, all on horse, fully kitted up. It's cool. exactly 500 points. That's cool. That's cool. That'd be quite a good one. Um, who else? How are you on Rue Mill? It's alright. It's, like it's alright. It's got a bit of a rubbish version of Thranduil Legolas. <laughs> yeah. um, it's got Boromir, Faramir, Denethor. That'd be cool. 
And I guess you could eventually bring in Eowyn into that, but probably not when Denethor's there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the uh, Theoden, uh, Eomer and Eowyn. There's, there's, there's lots of them. Yeah. Theodred, yeah, before he dies. Yeah. I th- there, are, there, are lots of, there are lots of families. Family is a, a big core theme in, uh, in, in Tolkien. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Reuben. Got all the dwarves as well. <laughs> God, let's not even get started yeah, yeah, yeah. on dwarves. Dwarling, barling. Kili, fili. Next question is from Baradazakan. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tusk weapons only gives it four attacks on the trample. I was right. You were right. Yes. And foul temperament gives it's it four attacks. Game, it? Yeah. Unless so, it had foul temperament as well. Possibly. Um... Without the way, I finally got back in the hobby thanks to you guys. Excellent. Good That's what I'd like to hear. Uh, for my question, what do you think on allying a Castellino Dolbledur in a 500 point Haradrim Easterling Force? They're alright, aren't they? They're pretty good. They spend 5, 2 attacks, and Morgul Blades, if they cause one wound, they can just kill you outright. And they can use their um, will Blood as fate. fate. Yeah. So they're, they're quite survivable. Yeah. For a while, they're limited to sort of twelve turns of combat, assuming they don't take any wounds. Yeah, they're, they're kind of like assassins, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. You, you send them. You, into you throw them into things where you need the fight by you and the big hit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, give it a go and let us know how that gets on. Yeah. Next up, we got Reuben fifteen thirty two again. Nice. <laughs> You're very keen this week. <laughs> Actual strategic question. In an Isengard 500 point list, would it be better to have Vrasku or the Uruk Captain as a leader? The Captain is defence 7, but will end up in the thick of fighting, while Vrasku snipes, but is susceptible to bows, bows since he's defence 5. So I guess he means elf bows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thoughts on how this would work? Thanks again, fellas. This is a very common predicament yeah. for even veteran Isengard players. Yeah. Um, I would err uh, on the side of the Captain. Interesting. Um, he doesn't have to go into combat. He can be one of the heroes that sits behind. He's good in combat, and if he loses a combat, he's not you know, your regular Joe can't hurt him as easily. Mm-hmm. You need the six rather than a five. Which is interesting because I would err uh, on the other side, and, that, and this is yeah because uh, I guess this this is from being a, a, a Rohan player where you've not really got apart from your aimer, your threes and mm-hmm. the threes in the right places, and you want him to be going and chopping stuff up. So all yeah. of a sudden, something which gives away victory points has to be in the thick of it. Yeah. Now, I know you say your captain doesn't have to be, but you do want that captain doing some stuff. I don't know. I, 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 Strip five, five, five. The, 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 the thing for me is, he's going to be with the troops at the front, and that's where Fury's going to be. Mm-hmm. So you're going to have your five-up saves uh, with the captain, more than likely, whereas Rasku with the crossbows at the back isn't going to be near Fury. Mm-hmm. So at least when you're broken, courage tests for the captain aren't too much of a worry. Yeah, I suppose so. Whereas Vrasco's got to then sort of catch up, get back into it. It's a really tough one, and I've heard lots of Isagar players sort of deliberate, even the likes of Damien, you know, yeah. so, well, do I make Vrasco or do I make... Uh, you know, so if you are an Isengard player, what do you think? Because neither of us really play Isengard, yeah. so uh, what do you think has worked better for you? Having a captain as your leader, you know, who's high defence, yeah. and probably being around Fury, mm-hmm. and high fight value, etc. Or Vrasco being at the back. It'd yeah. be interesting to see what everybody else thinks. Um, thoughts on how this would work thanks again fellas no problem at all Reuben 1532 again gee sorry for all these comments well that's so subscription magic you're talking of is, oh, oh we were talking about this uh, about payment for videos it's yeah. called Patreon uh, Patreon I, I looked into when we first started and you need a heck of a lot more subscribers than we currently have for, to get Patreon to uh, accept you onto their programme so as soon as you start, they take quite a big cut as well. Yeah. What might be better, we've discussed before, is actually just having a subscription service via... You You looked into this on our PayPal. We've got, yeah. a, we've got a joint PayPal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which we don't use. <laughs> um, we've got a joint PayPal. Yeah. Um, you looked into it, and there is a way... There is, there is a way to sort of subscribe through a PayPal. So, say, for standing orders, essentially, but it's just subscribe to this, and you pay X amount per month. Um, we're probably going to do it where if you pay £2, you get this. If you pay £5, you get this. If you pay more than £10 a month, you get this. Um, and then people have access to extra stuff for that. If you would be interested in doing that, how much would you want to contribute? That's yeah. you. I'm talking to you. How much would you like to contribute? Make sure you comment on the next speak for question. So yeah. it gives us a good idea about what, what we can do. Yeah. Next up, we've got Jamie Finnegan. He's put, hey guys, must have missed the deadline last week. So here's my question again. What are your favourite and least favourite armies to play against and why? Keep up the good work. 
I wouldn't say there's a favourite army to play against. I, I, I like playing against dwarves because I've got a lot of success against them. <laughs> the Rohan. Um, I really enjoyed playing against the Lake Town because even though I lost that game, hmm. you get the feeling. I, I think when you get the feeling that you're killing s stuff, you still enjoy. It. Yeah, you you still yeah, enjoying yeah. it. Um, my least favorite army to play against. Hmm. The Goblin Horde. I, I don't enjoy playing against them. Okay. Even yeah, though I no used goblins. one, I don't enjoy playing against it. Because I know what it's capable of. Well, the Haradrim <laughs> Spam as well. Never, yes. pati never particularly enjoy that game. Yeah, I don't like playing against uh, Watch Your Car and Spam. Yeah. Um, but similarly, I, you know, don't get me wrong, I, I, I enjoy the tactical challenge, side, of, challenge of it, but um, playing against sort of your Wood Elves when you've got all the Stormcallers, your yeah. Thranduil and stuff, because obviously it causes lots of problems for me. But to be fair, when you get in there, you are killing stuff, so yeah. it's, it's Also, it's I, tough. I genuinely don't like all hero forces. <laughs> I'm talking to you, Quinn Duggan. <laughs> Neither do I. No, I just, I just, I, I don't like the because the, the game boils down to very much. Do you roll a six this turn? You do. Okay, kill my guys. You don't roll a six. Can I roll a six? I do. Can I? Can I? Can I one shot you? No. Off you go again. Yeah. Six. Yeah. There's mm. only so much you can do against them. Yes, he got a four. I got a six. Two points of mine. Two points of mine. <laughs> oh. Two points of mine. Why not? Uh, yeah, no, I, I find that you know you end up having to be very skirmishy against that yeah, because yeah. you have to knock them off the horses. Then when they charge in, you've got to make sure you get enough guys ready for the next turn, and it becomes sort of a yeah, kind of expect to lose the first turn of combat. So you, you know, put enough in there so that he can't throw it combat. Expect to lose your front line, so put a line behind your spears so that you can't combat through to your, your support heroes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like playing as all heroes though, and it's, uh, it's good fun. Uh, so next up we've got Ben Howard. He says, Good day again boys, thanks for the suggestion. I will be doing an all-mounted Rohan army after my question on the Facebook wall. <laughs> yes! It's a massive shame that the Australian site has so many miniatures not available. Also, I came second in the tournament with the list you guys assisted in, so well done. Goes without Cheers. <laughs> Here's an interesting, is it? Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Uh, a place in deciding game against one of the tournaments. Oh, seems to play the same. He had an interesting game. Play, uh, yeah. placing game against the winner of the tournament. Uh, my question to you for the next project, as mentioned, uh, doing all Mata Rohan with the traditional paint scheme, how would you suggest I paint them? The traditional paint scheme. The traditional paint scheme is brown and greens, isn't it? Yeah, and I obviously got red shit. Browns, greens, reds yeah. to, to. I mean, Pick I, out. I, I would go with that all day long, though. <laughs> um. Maybe orange shields. Like, is this your Dutch crush on Jan yeah, coming yeah. out? <laughs> I bet you've been cheering on Holland in a world cup. <laughs> Go on, Jan. Yeah, we love you, Jan. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know what you do differently. It's Roman, I like them the it? way they are. I like them the way they are. But, um, yeah, I mean, I guess a couple of things I did differently. I did my Royal Guard with um, red cloaks mm. instead of green. But I stuck, I stuck between the greens and the reds. Yeah, the, the, Greens, the, reds and brown. They sort of fit the the theme of the force really well, so... Yeah, it, you know, couldn't be, be more perfect. Yeah. I guess you could sort of go for more browns and stuff, maybe make them look more like the... Because um, in, in the pictures in the book, they've, they've got the more brown. There's, there's more browns involved. There's more leather armour and other yeah. more sort of shiny armour. So you can do go for that look, sort of the grim bold, kind of hem, Helmingus kind of look. Browns, yeah. no greens. Could be good. He spoke for my next project, uh, as mentioned, doing all mounted Rohan other than a traditional paint scheme. Oh no, he's put... for the next 500 point local tournament, we'll be going with. He's got Eowyn, she's on a horse, she's got shields, she's got armor, and she's got a throwing spear. He's got eight Rohan red shields, four with throwing spears, two Sons of Al, and two Outriders on horse. And he's got Urkenbrand, he's got nine red shields, four throwing spears, and two Sons of Al, and it's 499 points. Very skirmishy. Lots of throwing spears and bows. Yeah, it's even more skirmishy than mine. Yeah. Um, the the things that the things that you will find difficult is either of those as a leader are gonna go down reasonably quickly. I mean, obviously Urkenbrand needs defence seven, but he's got one fate and two wounds, so it doesn't take too much mm. too much to get rid of him. Um, 
you would have to play this force very skirmishy. Mm -hmm. Very skirmishy. That's all I would say. Good good numbers. Yeah. Good numbers for an all, all mounted force. You've got four sons of our rather than two, so it means that you, if I think you put a list on Facebook and you had two and one of the comments I was gonna say was that they become target priority so then they go down actually reasonably quick. Because yeah. yeah, yeah. everything focuses on those two. Two outriders, you're in your bow limit there, and yeah. they're, they're good. It's alright, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's, it's not a bad list. It's good. It's alright, let us know how you get on with it, because only real men ride with the wrong hand. Real men fight on foot. <laughs> Next up, Max Robinson. He's put, hi guys, a big thanks for answering my question last week. It was a lot of information to take in, but I think I got it all. My question for this week is about the tournament side of things. I really want to make it to your second tournament in Stockport. Make sure you do, it's going to be amazing. Um, but as I'm only 16 and I live in Twickenham, I may struggle to make it. There's some guys coming up from Twickenham. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So get yourself onto the, the uh, Facebook page and GBH on Facebook, see, see if you can share a lift. Or yeah. Or you meet, meet, meet up beforehand, get a few games in so your parents know sort of who you're travelling with. Yeah. Um, have you got any tips on persuading some stubborn parents on why we should make the trip? Other than the tournament is going to be great fun and a chance for me to play with, with my toy miniatures for a whole weekend, which I doubt they'll find very convincing. Or well, even fiancés don't find that convincing, <laughs> let alone parents. Um, well, you know, if you want to fall out of them, you could make the argument that you're 16 and although you're living under their roof, you could join the army and you could <laughs> legally get married and you could have a baby legally. Um, you could go and fight for your country legally, so why can you not go and pay toy miniatures for a weekend? You could make that argument. So that's probably not going to go down any better than no playing with toy soldiers. It won't go down very well. While you live under this house, you must obey the Rouse rules and you do as we say. That's probably what we will get. It's a hobby. Yeah, just explain to them this is your hobby, this is what you enjoy doing, and you want to go meet the guys that you watch on YouTube. <laughs> maybe no no don't say that don't say that don't say that just, just say that you, you want to go and do it and uh, maybe build up some brownie points before yeah. and, you know put the dishes in the dishwasher wash them like instead of painting into these Q&A's wash up to the Q&A's that works for me yeah. works for me um, yeah just get yourself some brownie points be really good you know imagine that you, your parents are Santa Claus which obviously <laughs> they're not imagine that they're Santa Claus you've got to be really good to get that present yeah. mm hmm but make sure you make it stop for 2.0. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. We'll be there waiting for you, Max Robinson. You better be there or I will cry. And tickets are going to go up south very soon. And it will be early birds. So you need to be on it because they went like that last time. One day, wasn't it? One day they went. One day. Uh, there might be a few more available, but not many more. So you need to get on it. Next up, Barry O'Neill. We like Barry. Yeah. Uh, I can just picture Jamie in his Viking gear. When he gets the part, obviously. Uh, running into battle. I know they did the helmets, man. I know they did. I did history as well. Don't worry, but I thought it'd be funny. And yeah. it was. <laughs> uh, running into battle, screaming, "What my chica?" And chop chop master. I think that's yeah. probably get kicked off. <laughs> what my chica? <laughs> this is how you deliver it. Yeah, yeah, what my chica? <laughs> that's quite good, actually. Yeah. It's a good war cry. Um, love your Rohan terrain, James. I'm currently working on my own watchtower, but was just wondering. Would you like to add anything else to what you've got, or are you happy with your acquisitions? Barry, are you, are you offering to make us terrain? Because if you're offering to send us stuff, <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> um, what do we need? Well, we've got dreams of boards that we would like, yeah. like real but we, we would like like an Osciliath-themed yeah. board, like an actual board that was Osciliath, that was Osciliath. Yeah. Um, what else would we like? I, I always say Lake Town. Yeah, you want a late town board. I guess what we want now is actual like four by four boards because yeah. um, because with Darren getting robbed. Darren, you know. Darren having some of his models taken, he's had to lock the hall when he's not there, so it limits our time that we can film in his sort of amazing hall with all the terrain free to use. And and this is why it's even more important that can you? I, I know that you've all just been staring at this the whole time you've been watching this Q and A. But can you see this T-shirt? This is why, whether you're waiting for dice or not, because we don't know when the dice are going to come, we know that these companies take a while, but we've got this limited edition t-shirt, okay? Now, we need you guys to support us, because then we can do things like get actual boards yeah. and have them set up and afford to do that. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but we can only really do that with your support. So you need to get on and buy these t-shirts, guys. You need to send an email to ilovewargaming at gmail.com. Don't worry if you've sent an email we've not emailed you the order form back yet. We're going to do that in one go. They've yeah. got... How got well, this has gone on Sunday, which will be the, what, 21st? Friday, yeah. So they've got 10 days. So 10 days. 10 days to order these t-shirts. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to let you in on something. Only 10 people have ordered so far. That doesn't really encourage us to make us think, well, hang on a minute, yeah, we can, um, you know, get GBHL, yeah. Yeah, GBHL merchandise is the way to go, it's just making us think. Maybe. See, see how the dice do, maybe, but after that, maybe it's not so This is what? down to you, so if you've not ordered a GBHL t-shirt yet, do it, because you're supporting your channel, and only by supporting this channel can we continue to make these videos. And it's a fact. He's put... Oh, and thanks for the Hobbit SPG Island shout out a couple of weeks ago. Ye are a pair of legends. Keep up the great content. Thank you very much, Barry. We love you very much. And we're looking forward to seeing you in Stockport in September because I know you're going to make the journey. Next up, we've got HD Miniatures. This is Harry from Australia. He's put, hey guys, been a while. When do you normally start introducing banners and horns? How many points or warriors till you decide? Also, what happened to England against Italy? Thought you guys had that one. Cheers, Harry. Well... Should we start off with banners and horns? Horns I don't tend to include unless they're on a hero, like obviously Urkenbrand or you know, maybe Durin if you're playing dwarves. 20 points for plus one courage. Genuinely not worth it, in my opinion. No. Does it, does it, affect, it affects everybody? It affects also. every model on the table on your side. It's got its uses. Would you think for evil, would it be worth for, it? For evil, maybe, but then like that one model... It, it can't be passed on like a banner. Mm -hmm. So when that model dies, the, the, the horn dies with it. Mm. So it's going to be targeted, isn't it? Yeah. Um, as for banners, I tend to only include them if, this, if the tournament scenario says it's got to the death in there. It's like, oh, I need a banner then. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I first went on to the One Ring when people were talking about banners and things, and the, and the standard piece of advice was... Um, don't include a banner, a banner until you're going over 500 points. It's not worth it up until then. But what we found with Deadliest War Bands, <laughs> yeah. was that it, in the smaller scale, it's actually really worth it. You, you, you notice the, get the, the impact it has so much more. I had a game versus Kieran at the first Mansfield tournament I went to, and the banner won him that game. It won him the game, <laughs> and me not killing him with some of the ale. Disappointed. Piercing, striking, with them on the floor, with six dice. It's and it's all of the combats that I won in the first, the first go. But his banner won him the game when it, when it came down to Nick. Nick being able to do that, re you know, he rolls a one, I roll a five, he gets to re-roll that one. Always <laughs> a six. <laughs> it's always a six. Any re-roll, any re-roll. It, it needs a six, gets a six. Yeah, It's horrible. So, um, banners are something I, I try to include, and then I, I always deliberate between sort of three more warriors or the banner. And I included the one at TOS, yeah. and that wasn't because of uh, thingy coming up either to the death to the death because it was random for yeah. for those ones just for the foot troops to shield and get three dice exactly yeah. and that really worked yeah. really worked because you could just you know you had the probability of winning a lot of your combats and then just gang up on one end of the line yeah that was a that was a clever boy moment very good. Um, Barry O'Neill here answers the uh, England Italy question. If the simple answer is Andrea Perlo. Yeah, he's cool. Uh, the man is 35, he had 95% pass accuracy in a match and made over a fifth of all the passes of the entire <laughs> Italian team. You can't allow him to dictate matches like that. England was shattered second half as well, so the Italians training in the sauna in the lead up obviously worked. When I watched the game, I thought England did okay. I did. didn't watch the game. I was working the next day, so I was like, no, I can't stay up for it. Yeah, it, it, it was, was a late one. I can I just say I love the uh, the theme tune on ITV for um, for the Brazil 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 na, 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 Brazil <laughs> It's so cool It's so cool that I was singing it in the shower last night when James was trying to go to sleep and then I came out and uh, covered in soap I started doing a little bit of a bum dance Yeah not that you guys need to think about that but it's a cool song I just wanted to get out there Um yeah our problem was on that left-hand side, wasn't it? You know, everybody knows that. I don't need to say that. Uh, the communication between Baines and Rooney was shocking. 
was shocking and that was the uh, the main weakness and we had a couple of chances in the second half I mean the Italians dictated possession I thought we gave them a lot of um, a lot of respect but if you think they had hardly any chances they were pretty contained we looked the more daring the more swashbuckling but it just didn't pay off for us so we need to beat Uruguay tomorrow night well mm. I hope we beat Uruguay on Thursday <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, and loads of our players having cramp at the end, that's really not good. Okay, next up, remember we don't read his name now. Conan and Friends. Yeah, Conan is your name now. Conan and Friends! Yeah. Um, hi, this is my first, it's not your first comment to this channel. I've seen that name before. Yeah, 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 we've commented on it. We said, we couldn't say it out loud. We couldn't loud. say it last time. And then you then commented and said, it's from South Park. Yeah, so don't, don't, don't go away with, oh, this is my first comment on this channel, we remember. We remember. We told you we have a certain set of skills. Yeah. <laughs> and well, firstly, <laughs> I just want to say awesome job on this channel. It's really handy to see war bands being used, so I know how good they are before I buy them. Well, you're welcome. Uh, my question is: if you agree with me that there are some hero profiles that are not quite right, yeah. the first example is Lurtz. In the film Lurtz, the first true leader of the Orokai, yet in Games Workshop, he is basically the same as every other named Orokai hero, Uruk Fraskun Maher, and actually perhaps worse than something since he has no special rules. I agree, that, that, that probably comes down to the, he was the, one of the first Urukai heroes out, so at the time him having three might was a big thing. Yeah. And then when they've released further heroes he's become sort of left behind. Been overtaken. Um, the other example is Bard the Bowman vs Legolas Greenleaf. I can't see why Bard has three attacks and three wounds and Legolas doesn't. If they fought in the film I can't see Bard beating Legolas. Apologies for the super long question. Well no worries about the question, it's a very valid question. Yeah. It is. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of um, heroes and troops that came out early in the game which are well outdated yeah. and do need a good overhaul. Lurts is definitely one of them. Mm. You know, lots of Numenor as well. Yeah. And stuff and just like the High Elves. The high Elves need a new troop, basically. Yeah. They had loads planned in Legions of Middle Earth, but then that got dropped. But I mean, in general, I mean, I think with the Hobbit, you haven't seen too much, too much of a stat creep, actually. I don't think. No. There's not loads of overpowered things that have come out. I, I don't think any of it's overpowered, actually, any of the new Nothing Hobbit stuff. No. Can you think of no. anything which is? I think Dwalin is probably the most abused. Yeah, Dwalin and the, Pony. The, the ponies are probably the most broken thing in The Hobbit. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought it? <laughs> ponies being broken. In terms oh, of Bard versus broken. Legolas, well, Bard is a lot more expensive. Yeah. And I don't, and not as good. No, he, his trade off with the three attacks and three wounds is, is fight five and defence four. You know. Yeah. Leg I think Legacy take down Bard. Mm. As long as he doesn't roll like Lindir versus the Goblin Scribe. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah you know what we're talking about. At least about. no one voted for the Goblin Scribe. Yeah, at least no one did. Next up I'm gonna just prep this up. Wobbachika! That's right, it's you, Wobbachika. Why not have a Wobbachika versus Chuck Chol Master? Not still on the best spelling. <laughs> Showdown back rep. Uh, yeah, how would we do that? Are we going to get you both in a room and say. No, I think, I think Chuck Chol Master rage, uh, gives a suggestion later on. That's what does it? Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Calling each other out. Mm. Who's your money on? Place your bets. No. <laughs> uh, my question this week is what would be a good 750 point all hero list preferably using elven heroes twins Glorfindel twins and Glorfindel um, Aragorn and Gandalf yeah. he said preferably using elven heroes let's replace Aragorn with Elrond with Elrond and, and then put Gandalf, Gandalf with Gilgalad on horse yeah, I guess that point swing changed it around a little bit there yeah, yeah. You need Gandalf in there for that all hero horse to cast. All hero horse. All hero horse. <laughs> all hero horse. <laughs> because he does what? Cast blinding lights. Which the all hero horse needs. Yeah, to stop them shooting. Stop them just skirmishing away from you. Next up, oh, this is your. Um, yeah, this is my. Your. Yeah. Your friend. Your friend. Your friend. friend. Your headbutt friend. Headbutt friend. Headbutt friend. <laughs> Rock City friend. Rock City friend. Dubakar uh, friend. <laughs> no, that's, that's Damien. Dubakar friend. Dubaka! Dubaka. Uh, it's Billy Fitzmorris. An affectionate headbutt. For some reason, I don't think the girl you've been hitting on took all night took it that way after you headbutted her. So you were hitting a girl. I was hitting on a and girl. And then you were hitting a girl and then you were headbutting her. Yeah. I'm just a terrible person. <laughs> <laughs> you were drunk. It's yeah, okay. I'm very drunk. And the, no, it's not! 
I'm the master of stopping my own sort of progress. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's looking like I'll be driving up to DOS 2.0 and bringing along Mr. Lake Town and the Lord of Middle Earth with me. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So he's coming with James Long and Jay Clare. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, we're hoping to come up on the Friday. So what are the chances of getting in some battles against the two of you that day? Very good. Very good. I booked those. I booked pretty much the six days off nearly. I get time to recover. I haven't, but I'm self-employed. I'm sure I'll be alright. My only disappointment for TOS was that I didn't get to play either of you, so it'd be good to get the chance, even though I'll get creamed. Well, that's well, not that's necessarily not true. true. <laughs> <laughs> Quinn Duggan called me out of TOS, and he smashed me. Yeah. He, he didn't really. I would have beaten him in two more times. Oh, yeah, sure. I put that in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would. And then what did you do to the video? You deleted them both, didn't you? No, I didn't. In fact, I'm actually complaining. One, because it's a bit of content, I can't get it up on there. Yeah. Uh, I had to delete the um, the bits that would film so that we could yeah, get in yeah. last week's recordings. But I saved the um, pre-battle sort of welcome bit oh, yeah. with me and Quinn. Because I'm thinking of just putting that up and then actually writing down what happened. Oh. To music. Yeah. It's a video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a day's content. <laughs> uh, but not only that, I think Quinn deserves... Because, um, you know, time got called. Mm. You know, he didn't, he didn't pay... The Warhammer World to close yeah. 45 minutes later, you know. We could have had, had 15 more minutes and seen what happened. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. Next up is Brad Thy Hipster. Brad Thy Hipster's put Hey guys, just like to ask a question to everybody. Would you buy custom models that were never brought out from Games Workshop? What would they be? Thanks, guys. So I'm guessing he means Four Lord of the Rings, like yeah, custom yeah. models. Would I buy them? Maybe in the future, Games Workshop drops the license. But well, I, do you know what? I, I think um, I, I wouldn't think of them as game models that were. Yeah, I wouldn't think of them as Lord of the Rings models. Well, oh. strategy battle gaming models. But then yeah. again, you know, you think about the Tree Giants of, of yeah, Shadow of Flame true. and and the Aeon, and they yeah. are great models. They're, they're beautiful, and they're they're like the Tree Giants that that well, the Ents that Games Workshop never made. Yeah. So I don't really see the problem with that. No. Too much. Hmm. What would they be? It's an interesting one. It'd be cool to have things like, well, obviously you want Sons of Ale on foot. Yes, I do. It'd be cool to see sort of almost um, like the troop variants, like you could have Helmlingers. Yeah, made, that'd be cool. Or you could have Mirkwood Rangers from um, from the Lothlorien list. Or you could have the Nondorian. Mirkwood Guard, sorry, yeah, yeah. I know. What do you mean? What? Yeah. <laughs> or like the Dolgo Dolgo or something. You know, it's yeah, yeah, I know. Th- what you things mean. where you've paid to upgrade them, but there is nothing different besides maybe a colour scheme. Or options that were in the source books, which the models never got made. So that yeah. you know. So for example, the. Um, Elf Rangers. The Helm's Guard. Helm Hammerhand. They used to be in the Legions of Middle Earth, and then yeah. they just got dropped. I think. Um, Rangers of the North Mounted. Yeah. That would be very popular. Mm-hmm. I think if somebody was to make generic Rangers mounted on like a generic fantasy ranger on a horse, yeah. I think that would be very popular. Travelling Ranger, basically. As would some very dynamic Huskars <laughs> Northmen <laughs> um, that looked very similar to Sons of Ale but on foot. That would be very popular. And I know that this is happening. Mm. So, oh, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. So that's probably what they would be. Next question is from David Lowe. Uh, thanks for answering last week's question. Just to point out, uh, you said Easterlings were thirty-three percent bullion, but they were FAQ to fifty percent. Are you alright? Huh? Two, one. Yeah. I got the moment question right. That, oh yeah, but I got cheated. Someone has cheated against me with a moment. Uh, probably due to the large number of bows in the Easterling box and the fact Candish bowmen are all armed with bows. That's why I, why yeah, I yeah. thought it got thing because of the Candish side of things. Uh, great to hear more info on Stockport 2.0. I'm now going through all kinds of lists in my head. How do you reckon an all goblin town would fare? 60 goblins plus the king, scribe, grinner, two captains, and golem puts me at 45 points short of 600. Maybe throw in a Moria shaman. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, keep up the good work and hope to see you in September. Also, count me in if you ever make GBHL dice. Well, we've sent off the order. That might take some time, but if you want to support the channel for now... T-shirts. 
This is what you need to get from one of these bad boys. The limited edition. Yeah. Uh, then we've got a couple of responses. Uh, Billy Fitzmaurice took full Goblin Town and got on to TOS and came top in his division. Great Horde Force. What was that evil Evil Hobbit? Evil Hobbit, yeah. But evil Hobbit. The, the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The guy who came top of his division had lost all of his games, but I think two. <laughs> so that gives you wow. an idea of how good Hobbit Evil were doing. Yeah. So yeah, wow. just think about that for a second. And that earned more than someone who came, who won all their games but came second in their division. Yeah, That's yeah. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Throne of Schools, great, great league. I've well, always brilliant because it was different. It, it was great, but for, for the league it doesn't work as, as it should, perhaps. Um, well, I was actually quite surprised it, it worked like that, that the yeah. winners of the divisions automatically came first to the night. Well, first to night, yeah. Yeah, I was quite surprised by that, actually. Mm. I thought that it would go by the... You would get the average... Oh, yeah, do it. just do yeah. your average. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 That would have been... That's a lot of work, though. <laughs> Makes it fairer, but yeah. Makes it fairer. Um, then Ian Moore. So, no, how do... Well, he wants to know how, how, how will it get on. Well... Uh, Mobility and um, forces that can skirmish you, you're going to have problems with. Yeah, you've got no ranged fire besides throwing goblins at people. So. Mm -hmm. okay, it might even be worth sort of taking out you know, a warband of the goblins and put a warband of... or well, something that can go with the, um, the Moria Shaman. So either some wogs on... You know, oh, some yeah. wog riders. Wogs and wog marauders. Wog Marauders. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take out 60 goblins. <laughs> <laughs> Replace them. With we have six Wog Marauders. <laughs> which would probably chew through 60 goblins, no problem. <laughs> yeah, Terra. Keep that shaman in there. Yeah, keep that shaman in there. Yeah, he'll do well with the goblin scribe to babysitting him. And make sure you are at Stockport 2.0. Oh, Billy, Billy's posted his 600 point list. What did he put in for the extra 45 points? Uh, well, Quinn Duggan put, I remember playing that army, it was hilarious fun. I bet you thought it was hilarious fun, Quinn, with your Boromir and Twins and Legolas and all those other nastiness. He's put, this is my 600 points pure Goblin Town, I took to TOS. He put... He's, he's done pretty much the same thing, um, but he's taken an extra Goblin Captain and split a warband. Uh-huh. So he's got the extra might in there. Yeah. Good call. 68 models. Uh, plus however many describers decided to bring on comes to 597 points I was thinking of putting a more shame in there but felt it took away some of the fluff either way it was a lot of fun to play with and would deco definitely recommend you can um, always convert a sort of um, Goblin Town Goblin to look like a shamanised version hasn't Murtown done this? potentially I think he might have done because he's a legend mm. and he's great at lots of stuff <laughs> he really is next up we've got Ian Marley He's put at stop point 2.0. What are the accommodation options available? Are there many hotels, B&Bs, or caravans close to the Northwest Gaming Centre? Well, there's a couple of gypsy sites not too far away in Stockport. Uh, if you want to do that. Uh, he put keep up the great, um, good work. Really like James's idea about random player tournaments. So did I. It's been on my mind a lot. And the last game being played from Swiss ranking. Could this eradicate the tactical lose first game tactic I hear about in some of your videos? It's not a real tactic. It's just... It's, it's theory that the best game to lose is your first game. So you, you don't tactically lose it. No. It's what you say if you lose your first game. <laughs> um, but, but what it can do is it can mean that then you have an easier you, run up to You sort of, like you top four or so, and you just dodge them until the very end. Yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, you start playing in the end. Uh, in terms of uh, hotel accommodation... There's plenty um, around. There's loads. Which was the one that... Like, Britannia. Britannia Hotel. The Britannia in Stockport, which is where most people went last time. Yeah. So... Uh, you heard it from us first. Um, I would recommend that all of you go and stay in the same hotel because then you can go as a group. So there's Britannia. There is a travel lodge just over the road. Just don't go in the beef eater next yeah. to it because we boycotted it after. Well, the last one. well yeah, we got a boycott on them. Yeah. Did, did you ever get a response? No. Unbelievable. No, nothing. Nice shot. No, nothing on the Facebook, nothing on the TripAdvisor, nothing through their direct complaints form that I went through. Absolutely shocking. Awful. So just don't go in that beef. Yeah. But there's a travel lodge next to it. Travel lodge is a pain. We need to find a new pub now. Oh, we'll, we'll find one. Yeah. Well, there, there was the pub that let us in. Oh, yeah. You weren't with us. No, wasn't wasn't really. That wasn't too far from the Britannia side. So. Um. Yeah. So the Britannia. That's a good a good call. That's not too far away. Um. 
Yeah, in terms of the random player, I, I do like that. Because I think it's different. Yeah, yeah. Like up until the last I, game I, I or the last two games. Put, put it to the group to see what they think. We're not mm. doing it for us. I think we should. I think we should. Because it'd be different. No. It stops us from being Mansfield 3. Nah. Which is my main worry. Is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we're talking up. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like that idea. I'm just putting it out there that I like that idea. Uh, next up, we've got. You always end up reading his name. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember how to say it. Hugh Janus. Hugh Janus. That's how you say it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks for answering my question and thanks again for all the hard work you put into the channel. I can't say this enough. Uh, how did you propose to your fiance, James? Were you nervous? <laughs> I, love, I love that. Were you nervous? <laughs> uh, no, I wasn't actually. I knew she'd say yeah. <laughs> um, how did I propose? I planned it for quite a long time. I knew that I was going to do it when I was going to do it. I knew I was going to do it when we were celebrating our three years. Um, so on our two years to celebrate, I took her to this really nice hotel in York called the Cedar Court Grounds. So this was on our two year anniversary um, of me asking her to be my girlfriend. And the reason why I went to York is because that's where I asked her to be my girlfriend. So we had a great time. And at the time I planted the seed and I said, this is, uh, we should make this like our regular anniversary thing. So she wouldn't think that next year it was special, even though it is a really special place to go and a special hotel. Uh, and then I spent the next year saving up, saving up, and I was hiding the cash that I was withdrawing um, in a shoe under the bed. <laughs> That's brave. That I knew that she wouldn't go into. Okay. So I, I hid it in this pair of shoes and I saved up a lot of money in that shoe. And um, I had an idea in my mind of what kind of ring like, that we were going to go for. It's like she, she walks around. I mean, when, when you've been with someone for a while, they walk in and go, oh, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Oh, that same one I thought, right, it's got to be from York. Um, but first up, at that Christmas, um, we got Jane's dad tickets to go to Man United versus Everton at Old Trafford. And I was going with him. And I knew that was when I was going to ask him. You asked permission. Yeah. I asked permission, yeah. Um, and I made sure I was in the safety of 70,000 United <laughs> fans, but the only scouser in the United end, because um, he's very scouse. Yeah. yeah, he's really scouse. I've done that before. I've sat in the Stratford end and been like... You get away with it, though. You don't have, like, a really strong... Well, when, when I was a bit younger, though, I was, when it was still there, and it was my dad. Then there's a dollar dollar! Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I, he, I turned around and went... I, I said, uh, not a great result for you, and, you know... <laughs> no, basically, I said, "Well, I'm about to make your day even worse." <laughs> <laughs> and then, I, and then I asked him. I said, uh, "I want to ask Jane to marry me this this year." And uh, he, he didn't know what to say. <laughs> that was that was a weird moment. That was a weird moment. <laughs> and then when we were drinking in the Bishop's Blaze after, which by the way is like the Man United hooligan pub, yeah. and he's in there. Being scouse, scouse as scouse. I was really worried, you know. It was, it was at least, at least you have to defend him, and then you'd have to say, Yeah. Well, this dude turned around to him, and um, with a very because a lot of Man United fans are really Irish, like, or are really Irish, they're Irish, <laughs> yeah. a lot of them are Irish, <laughs> super Irish, and just super Irish. And it uh, turned around to Jim when he was in Bishop's Blaze and went, You're not from around here, are you? <laughs> Jim turned around and went, Neither are you, <laughs> 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 which is brilliant. Um, which is fair enough so yeah I asked him permission and then yeah I booked the hotel well in advance um, I actually went to York to shop for the ring and when I went to York to shop for the ring I went to the hotel and told them and got them in on it yeah. um, and uh, so, so they know all, knew all about it when I got there and you know we, we, we arrived there we we had a nice meal that night the next day I was like listen I just want you to relax we need to have a really nice day so we got up we had some nice breakfast we went out we Bought her an outfit for the evening. She went and um, had a bit of a like spa day kind of thing, and we went back to the hotel. We were swimming, and it was just a, I was really relaxed. I was having a great time, and then uh, we had our meal in the hotel because the hotel restaurant's gorgeous. Taxi came to collect us. Uh, the concierge guy, by the way, was an absolute legend. He was working with me for this engagement, like helping me out. And he was fuming because this taxi arrived late, and it, you know it couldn't yeah. be late because I'd arranged for something else, and we. Were, I'd, I'd said to Jane, I said, I've gotten to arrange to get, because last time we came here, we ended up in this rubbish bar. They're going to take us to a dead nice bar. Yeah. So he dropped us off by Clifford's Tower, which is where we parked on when I took her there for the first time. Um, 
and started walking through the park towards the river it was at the point where I asked her to be my girlfriend we were walking along and Jane's like why are we going this way let's go this way the sun came out it had been a horrible day and then the sun came out so it was gorgeous and there was a guy there and he was like just busking but he was playing a song and I went oh listen to what he's playing and he's playing our favourite song mm, she didn't clock on convenient. <laughs> she didn't clock on and, um, and she went she started going up to him and I was like shit what's she doing <laughs> oh, uh, I updated it now I was like Ah, what's she doing? And um, and she went, I've got to give him a pound, he's dead good. So she chucks a pound into his empty guitar case because he's already been paid. Yeah. Um, and she comes back over and I uh, said, well, I might as well give this to you here now and I give her a card because she loves cards. She, she went mental at me when I, like, I, I got a, this present for Valentine's, like, great present and just because I didn't get a card, she was furious. So I got her a card and it said all this stuff about, you know, how... I had nothing left to say except one more thing. And he changed the song at that moment mm. to the song that she started singing when I asked her to be my girlfriend. So it went from Elbows, uh, One Day Like This, to Biffy Clyro, Bubbles. Oh, there's yeah. a girl, there's a girl down by the river. And, um, conveniently. Mm. And then, uh, then it said at the end of the card, look up at me. And I got down on one knee and uh, opened up the room and said, Jane, will you marry me? And she went, <laughs> <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Have you asked me, Mum and Dad? <laughs> Are you going to put it on? I was like, I've never done this before. You know, so, yeah, it was, it was perfect. That's nice. It was perfect. Thanks for asking. That's taken up most of our q and yeah. <laughs> Let's crack on. Okay, next up we've got Jeremy Smith. James, after a few snarky comments about last week, I figured out my question. About what? age last oh, week. Oh, about age last week. I figured out my question. What was the average age... Was I talking age? about Steve? I think maybe, I don't know. Probably. I don't remember Go last about week. Steve. Yeah. Uh, what was the average age of tournament players? Oh, and our tournament. Did the store keep any hard data on age when they registered? Uh, from what I've seen on your videos, I'd say mid-twenties or so. I'd say that'd be about, about right, mid-twenties. Mid-twenties. Well, when you average it out over everyone, probably it's about mid-twenties. Oh, yeah, 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 because you'll get the odd person who's sort of over 30, over 40, some people even older. Yeah, but then you obviously you've got like the young bloods, like 16, even though, like, well, for us, we have even a like, 12-year-old there, I think. Yeah. So, I was saying, the average is out, it probably is about mid-20, so you're probably right there. Good observation. Uh, I expect nothing less from you. Yeah. Eagle-eyed Sam. <laughs> um, for watching your videos, it's about mid-20s or so. Now for the real question, do you feel that you, ha you have an unfair advantage in a tournament when playing against some snot-nosed little kid? So it's not those little lid, apparently. Um, a little bit, probably, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you, you know the game and you know the objectives and it's very easy for a kid to get bogged down in, I'm going to kill that hero or I'm going to kill stuff rather than I'm going to sit guys on the objectives and win the game. Yeah. Yeah, and then that was shattered for me when Quinn beat when me. Quinn beat you. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I was thinking, right, bat rep, not, not got long. Just Can't it. shoot is yeah. off the horses and spend all the time. Let's just go and have a fight. Oh, yeah, and it yeah. worked against me and it shows that you should be a scumbag when you play <laughs> against these kids. Because yeah. otherwise they'd beat you. And then it's even worse. It's worse. <laughs> it's worse. It's horrible. <laughs> I'll never live it down. No. Damn you, Quinn Duggan. <laughs> well, until next week, first age of Smith signing off. Yeehaw! <laughs> uh, next up, Rob Jacobs. He put, hey James, did you get my email about any Knights of Diamond on foot I can buy? I don't have any, I'm afraid. Um, did I get the email? I've been very busy lately doing the gym, so um, I might have seen it but just not responded to it. And the address to send the servant guard to. Uh, I will send them out to you very, very soon. I've got a couple of things to send out because I've got to send out James Richardson's um, model. model. And I've also got to send out some of my models for Kev Lawrence. Oh, yeah. And I've got to send out some of my models for Generation Shift. Yeah. So I'm going to do that all in one go. But expect them soon. Um, next up, we've yeah. got the Lord of Middle Earth. Yeah. Uh, Longy970. Yes, I'm James Long, just in case you are still undecided. No, I knew it you. You, you know, you gave off power. <laughs> you, know, you know, as any Lord of Middle Earth would. Yeah. Uh, after Throne of Schools and with all the talk about Vikings, I went home and watched seasons one and two in two days. It is incredible, and I really hope we all get to watch you as an extra, Jamie. Well, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you still haven't watched it, have you? 
No. You can you, you can see that I haven't watched it from yeah. your Amazon thing, can't you? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. World Cup's on the moment. I'm only a gym. It's not matter. Find time. James did. You watched it in two days. Um, there's only about eight episodes. How many businesses do you run, Longy? Yeah, you might be Lord of Middle Earth, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Micromanage. <laughs> Um, Delegate. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the complete opposite. Um, my question this week is: Are you following the World Cup? Which you obviously said. Are you part of a sweepstake? Yeah, I am. I go. I can go through Croatia. So when they play, when they played against Brazil, did they win last night against Cameroon? I fell asleep. Uh, uh, what was that? What's the phone? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I think. Did they play Brazil in the first game? They did, and yeah. they got cheated out of it. Yeah. So that first goal go in, I was still in the pub, I was like, yeah! and then like 10 minutes later, I was like, oh, it's over. Do you know what I think is funny? I think it's what's really funny is all those smug people who got Spain in their yeah. sweet states, <laughs> and Spain went out yesterday, and I just thought, ah, got it. <laughs> That's what I, it was a proper little sort of yeah. moment where I thought, all of those people are like, oh, look at me, I've got Spain, Spain in our sweet state, yay, <laughs> you're, you're out. Um, aside from England, obviously, who do you think will win? I don't think England will win. I think England will win. And Brazil for... I mean, uh, they're not be playing very well. Netherlands. <laughs> for for Jan. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I want Holland to win because having a World Cup winner as your manager mm. the next season, because he's obviously going to be Manchester United manager next season. Uh, but they didn't play as well against... I mean, they turned it on the second half. They didn't play as well against Australia. But did you see the goal from Tim Cahill? No, I've not seen the Oh my eyes. Have you seen the goal where Rooney does the long ball over to Van Persie, comes over his shoulder and he volleys in, I think it was versus Villa. No, um, is it that? For Man United and just volleys in. It's yeah. an amazing goal. Well, Tim Cahill does something similar, except it's from wider and he just, he, on the volley, left foot, smashes it, hits the bar, goes down and it's from like the penalty. It's just beautiful. Yeah, Holland is a good shout. I think Brazil just for the romanticism. And they've not played very well. They're not a very good Brazil side, but yeah, they're, they're, not, they're not the Brazil I remember as a kid growing up, where like Brazil were just untouchable. Even ten years ago. Yeah. Mind you, you would have been growing up ten years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. Some more casual ageism <laughs> on the GBHL channel. Uh, yeah, we'll go for Holland. Yeah. Channel says Holland. Yeah. We need like an octopus to come pick. <laughs> I'm sure Jan is saying Dankeveld right now. Next up, we've got Jonathan Punch on this, but hi guys, great QA as always. Uh, how long are you planning on running the battle companies? Will it only be for a few months or will it be until the end of time, having the remaining members of the original companies being he epic heroes, villains that could go toe to toe with Sauron himself? That would be awesome. Thanks, guys. I don't really know where battle companies. Going, I don't know. Well, originally we thought, right, we'll do a series. We'll do, we'll, we'll do like eight episodes doing a day, but they've been so popular. I'm enjoying playing them so much. I don't want it to just be eight. <laughs> no, I like them. I like, I like them. I think I think we need to get to a thing where we we're just releasing. Where we're doing like one a week. Yeah. Releasing one a week. At the moment, we're using them almost to replace the fact that we're not getting any battle, battle reports in. Yeah. So they are our battle reports at the moment. Yeah. Which is not ideal. Which I don't think people are too fussed about though, they seem to really like them. They so. do, they do, but these are existing subscribers in terms yeah, of getting yeah. new subscribers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Battle reports increase yeah. our views and increase our subscribers massively. That being said, since the start of the week, we've had 27 new subscribers. Welcome to the channel, guys! Yeah. Forget what I just said, battle <laughs> companies forever! <laughs> what well, yeah. we said as well, we might get it until they get to like 500 points and have like we'll a, just have a, a, a big one off and you know, people will die. Yeah, there'll be like a real epic contest. Yeah. Like a proper tournament style battle with yeah. once once it gets to five hundred points. Mm -hmm. Once the smallest one gets to five hundred points, yeah. maybe. And whatever the biggest one is, just deal with it. Deal with it. So it looks like it's Walk around it, deal with it. <laughs> Unbelievable. So you but, get but hang on, so I kill Giblin, he gets an extra fate point. Yeah. And then you get a Wild Marauder. Yeah. I mean It's because I beat the Rohan so amazingly. That, that was that courage, unbelievable. that courage test. Those courage tests were crazy. I need to get those red dice out of the hall. <laughs> Have you had to, are they yours? They weren't mine, I just borrowed them. Oh, you game. need to get them out I mean, the hall. I need to get them back. <laughs> so you need to steal... Are you the mystery Northwest what? Gaming Centre thief? No, don't be silly. <laughs> Darren! <laughs> it's alright, we'll, we'll close ranks. Um, Lock shields. Yeah, so we don't, we don't know yet, but we're just going to see how it goes. It's good fun, I'm enjoying it. 
Now, so, it's a new name. I've not seen this one. No. We've got Wally Collie. <laughs> <laughs> Um, That's another good username. Wallacolly! Wallacolly! Oh, we're just gonna. This, this, this just gonna name will just descend into us just taking a mic out of all your names. Wallacolly! 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 Hey, I have an Oracle army and my friend uses elves. Your friend's great. Uh, when we are in combat, do we have to take a Grold's Crush every go? No, no. Um, like I, said, I heard somewhere that elves create, cause terror. That's just a War of the Ring special rule. All elves cause terror in War of the Ring. Really? Yeah. That's good. Um, that doesn't apply to stretchy battle gaming, so no, you don't have to take the courage test every turn. Because that would be horrendous. Although if you've got Thranduil, you might as well. But Yeah. yeah. Some heroes got, can cast a spell called Aura of Dismay, which makes them all cause terror. Um, but no, they don't need to do it just as they are. Yeah, let's couple know of, what's going on. A couple there. of heroes have it as well. If he's cheating, we'll call him out for you, but he might be doing something right, or you might be doing something wrong. We shall see. Next up, we got VLR Productions. This seems very official. Yeah. Well, I wonder what VLR Productions is. Hey guys, maybe they're a producer and they're looking for a couple of handsome presenters to you know do something for the production. Damien and Tom would delete their videos then. <laughs> yeah, quick. <laughs> they're far too handsome for this channel. Yeah. Uh, next up, uh, sorry, next up. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> us. Yeah. So this is this how we roll. Sorry, uh, just wondering. Uh, uh, just wondering if you could do a shout out for me. Of course you can. Josh Lannin and my buddy Reese Cooper on your next question video. Well, this is our shout out to Josh Lannin and Reese Cooper. Booyah. Is that how you do a shout out? You say something so. like booyah? Maybe. I don't know. I'm, I'm not hip. <laughs> <laughs> Neither am I. Yeah. We would love to come down for a tournament in the summer. September's the summer. <laughs> I'm not even going to try and do that. Do! Boom! Stop! Do point zero. So maybe, maybe. <laughs> That's not bad. Yeah, make sure you make it. Um, been doing the Hobbit for a few years now. Anyway, to my question: Do you have any tips for demeeting monsters with Lothlorien and Mirkwood Force? I just got smashed by trolls and dragons due to the low defense of my elves and the high fight of the monsters. Thank you. Uh, Rumel is always good for dealing with monsters, making them reroll the six um, against things like trolls uh, or what else, Sentinel. You can make it to a courage test, if it doesn't pass it, you get to move it and it can't move again. So you can just push it away mm -hmm. and ignore it. Um, Gladriel can transfix them, so they're not as painful. And Heroic Striking, making sure you get your Elven Blades in there. It's really good. That's my suggestion. And having Legolas just one-shot them once they're in combat. <laughs> You're all six of them, would you? Yeah. And I would agree with all of that. Uh, next up we've got Generation Shift. This guy's a dude, he's got a great channel, painting channel, he's going to be painting up some stuff on the GBHL YouTube channel very soon when I send it to him. He's got, hey guys, sorry about last week's message. Didn't mean it to sound that way. I just <laughs> he said, I hope you guys are well. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not taking it in a bad way. It's funny. Uh, Thanks for the great videos. You guys create a friendly face to the Hobbit Lord of the Rings SPG. Great job. Oh, sorry, great job, Jamie, for initially starting this channel. Thanks. It must be great to see where it is now and the possibilities for its future now you have James on board. <laughs> Doesn't say that. It <laughs> says, ends at future. Uh, yeah, how do you feel? Because Jamie did start the, the channel. Yeah, it's good. It's nice to see something take off. After my video gaming channel didn't take off at all because I realised there's hundreds of thousands of millions of video gaming channels, it's nice to see one actually take off and do well. And I have a lot to thank you for that, I guess. Yeah, I just, yeah, no, I just thanked you. No, there's no... There's, there's no one. <laughs> there he is, there he is. There, we're, yeah. we're a team. We're a team. We're very committed to this. I mean, we, we work... Every we Thursday. work so hard for you. <laughs> so one day a week. So buy the t-shirts! <laughs> <laughs> buy the goddamn t-shirts, as Jeremy Smith would say. Come on, guys. You know, draw us the line. Help us out. Um, yeah, go on. Yeah. I'm glad that you... Recognise. <laughs> uh, he's put, I've got some good news. This isn't good news, this is great news. I'm thinking of coming to the September Desolation of Starport. Another one. <laughs> That's so good. 
<laughs> it's going to be amazing. This is going to be so good. We've got lots of different things planned for you. Shadow and Flame can't be there at this one, so we're having to think of other things. And we've got some great ideas, yeah. which we're going to talk about later on. Um, so we want to see you all there because it's going to be amazing. 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 Okay. Um, he's also put, how goes the gym? Fitness business setup, James. Hard work. Very, very hard. Hopefully, one of my uh, employees is there right now painting. If he's not, I'm very upset. <laughs> uh, but hopefully he's there now painting, which would be great. Um, we've got the quote for the floor that I needed. I negotiated it down a, a lot <laughs> so yes. I could do it. Um, so that should all be happening soon. I'm hoping to announce a launch early in July. The outdoor fitness is picking back up as well. We had a tough year last year because all these boot camps on Groupon every week. It just kills a real business like me. Um, in terms of lead generation. So it's picking back up. It's doing well. Hard work though. Okay, so my main question today is if you were to have one of the out of production models out of the range, including all of the old dioramas or metal versions, what would it be? Take care of yourselves. Happy hobbying, guys. Get off the grey mountain. Yeah. 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 It's not even a question, really. I love that model. It's a beautiful model. It's a cool model. Though. Do you know what really annoys me about that model? Because I know that I'd be in that whole predicament, should I pick it up, of, God, this is worth so much money. Mm. But I love the model, I'd have to keep it. You'd need two, wouldn't you? You would need One to two. sell to, like... A sucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One to keep. If anybody would like to send the channel, two. <laughs> well, three. Then we'd need three, wouldn't we? Four, maybe. I love that send model. Send us again off the Grayson House. You know what's real frustrating? It's that I was starting this hobby back when he was still available on horse as well, and I never picked it up because I had the uh, Gandalf the White version uh, bought or had somehow, and painted that white as Shadowfax and painted Gandalf the White as Gandalf the Grey on horse. Back when Gandalf the Grey could take Shadowfax, so I had the Shadowfax model. Mm. And I was like, ah, oh, I wish now I just bought Gandalf the Grey on horse and painted his horse white and counted that as Shadowfax. Yeah. It's a lovely model. It's a lovely model. That, that's, that's a lovely. benefit of hindsight, though, I guess. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that model. I got cheated out of one. I found one on Facebook, uh, on Facebook, on eBay. Um, I think it, it was that, a uh, Legolas mounted, and then I think it was just like Aragorn walk attack. And, uh... Guess not. <laughs> no, well, the, the guy had put it on oh, a the, the, bit. the buy it now thing, yeah. And I contacted him and said, listen, I've got a tournament this weekend, which to be fair was a lie, and I believe in karma, and because I lied was the reason I lost out on this. But I said, I've got a tournament this weekend. I said, you know, I'd be happy to buy it now. How much do you want for it? Just so that it can get here in time. He was like, well, I was hoping for £15. I was like, done. If you can take it off, that'd be great, and we'll arrange payment. I then made the mistake of instead of just doing it through PayPal, I said... Take, relist it as buy it now. Relist it as buy it now, but take the picture off and take and just put as the thing. And he just relisted it, and of course someone <sighs> bought it straight away. Right now, boom! I, I said, just relist it and at one o'clock, and I will buy it. And I got on there at one o'clock, and I was like, it's not there. And he was like, it should be, it's not there. He's like, it's already been bought, you've already bought it. And I was like, no, I've not bought it. And someone oh. was, I was, I was crushed. If that was you, and you're watching this channel... Well done. For well done fingers. for ruining our channel. You <laughs> look so serious then. Just think how good this channel could be if we owned two Gandalf the Great <laughs> mounted. I mean, I have to get my Legolas mounted from other sources, you know, instead of £15 for the two of them. That was you. Where did I get my Legolas from? Did I buy it on eBay? I know I traded it, didn't I? You traded it, didn't you? Okay, next up we've got Evan L. Well, hey guys, great speak friend question. I'm sorry I haven't been had time to ask in the last few weeks, but here's a good one. I'm looking into buying a gaming mat or board and some scenery for my home game board. What do you two recommend for realistic, cheap, yet good quality terrain pieces? How does James like his Hobbit hole from Greenleaf terrain? And also, do you two have any ideas as to what models are we getting? I'm going to be leaving the Game Switcher website soonest. Thanks for taking the time, Evan. The gaming mats... Um, it's kind of hard to find a good gaming mat for Lord of the Rings. There's a few, there are, there are a few independent companies that have a few independent companies do them. Um, I wouldn't know about the quality of them though. So you know they might be cheap, but they might be paying for because it's cheap. Yeah, and I'm guessing they go, they get snapped up on eBay now. Yeah. Very yeah. quickly. I got one. I got yeah. one. I got one before they went out of production. Nice. <laughs> um, it's a good, it's thing a you good did. job. <laughs> <laughs> you use it a lot. Mm -hmm. Um. <clears throat> 
And for scenery for the home game board, I honestly look at making your own if it's just for you at home. Model Railway Company um, are good as well. The yeah. Model Railway Companies. Yeah. 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 So um, if you speak to Mark Boyland of the Chester Model Railway Centre, he, he is 90, 90 nights on the One Ring Forum. I know they do bits of terrain. And eBay is, is good. Stuff yeah. comes up all the time. Sometimes it can go for a bit expensive, but trees. Trees can pop up. Trees. Yeah. Trees, just get loads of trees. Trees are a good start. Yeah. And trees, trees and then rocks. ruins. Yeah. yeah, trees, ruins, rocks. That's that's the way to go. And maybe looking to make your own. Next up, oh my eyes, it's only first day subscriber. Sam. 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 <laughs> we love you where have you been yeah. where have you been I've not seen an order form from you for a GBHL t-shirt but I'm going to do you know what I'm going to do on the next week when question I'm going to have a little list of people who bought the t-shirts here and anybody who asks a question who hasn't bought a GBHL t-shirt I'm going to call you out <laughs> like it'll be a long q &A. Evan L why haven't you purchased a GBHL t-shirt do you not like this channel or something that's Do you want this channel to go under? That's my question to you. Hey boys, uh, a bit out of topic. Uh, well, here it goes anyway. If you were to play another system, not from Games Workshop, which ones would you play? Well, we do play another system, don't we? Kind of. Can't of. really claim to play at the moment. Yeah, X-Wing. Pew pew, pew pew, pew pew. Um, <laughs> in space. Sun. 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 So, 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 we like that so, game. So, so. But I can see how there is like a kind of um, a limit on it, yeah. on how much enjoyment you can get from it. Yeah. Actually. Um, other games, you want to do Infinity, don't you? Yes, I do. I really want to do Infinity. Um, we want to do Batman, but the rules. Cy si Harrison posted on the Northwest Gaming Centre's Facebook page that. Um, do you want to learn Batman? Yeah. We do. We do. <laughs> Did you say that to him? No. I think I just saw it like late last night. I was like, I'll do it in the morning. Oh, yeah, you get on that. Yeah, yeah. So we do. We do, and we'll film it. So we can yeah. teach others to learn. Teach other, well, we could, we could do like a quick run like, through. Let's and, learn film, and he could be here because he's great on camera as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, you might remember him from such videos as uh, X Ring Tournament Review. Yeah. So check that out for Cy Harris. Such so, videos as one. I want to try out War Machine as well. Yeah. I've got, I've got trolls. I've not painted. Well, I've not got them painted. I've sent them all up to Kev Lawrence. So if he wants to showcase some other stuff, some yeah. other stuff, then he's got that to paint. His space Marine looked well cool. It did look cool. Do you know what? When I went up into Warhammer World and I went up into the little museum that you've got, we're saying you've got to go up there, and we walked around from left to right. So the Middle Earth was at the last bit. Yeah. Well, I have to say that the forty k stuff, stuff was cool. cool. It is cool when it's painted up amazingly and it's there, and you know you're like, oh my god, that's beautiful. Don't know what it made is. me want to play the game. Yeah. That and hats off to those people for making yeah. making that happen. Because <laughs> I'm a Lord of the Rings person, and and uh, hopefully that happens likewise. Yeah. Hopefully. Uh, so yeah, those are the games that we want to play, and we want to get them on the channel as well. Next up, well, we would say it's the one and only, but we've it's got the original. It's the original. Choo Choo Master. Choo Choo Master. Choo 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 Choo. Aggressive. It was aggressive, but you know. Choo -choo um, it you? Hello guys, those narrative campaigns would be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be good fun. It's, the thing with like Battle Companies has got like a game structure. Yeah. Whereas the narrative campaign is is it's stories. It's story yeah. time. Don't we're still playing the game, you know. But we're, you're we're using playing, the game to tell the story. We're using the game to tell the story, and you know, not hopefully will it go a certain way. But it'd be interesting to see what happens. Whereas Battle Companies is is a game system in yeah. itself, isn't it? So um, he's put. Would like to see some high, see a high elves list plus Rivendell lights. Uh, up to the question, what do you think about Glorfindel and how best to use him? And by the way, Chocho Master Battlecry would eat alive, Wobba Chicka. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just joking, but Battle Report would be great as Wobba Chicka suggests. You two could be our champions. Roll a dice and fate will decide. Cheers from Poland. Roll a dice and see. Well, who would you prefer to have your cha as your champion? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who would you? Well, I mean, are we actually fighting or no? no, no, no. Rolling dice. If we're rolling dice at the moment, you want Jamie? Because <laughs> in battle companies, <laughs> I mean, I guess you're making up for the last game. For the last game, of, uh, 
Remember those deadly swore bands yeah. where you just sulked because my dice were awesome. They were on fire. They were on fire. <laughs> they were. Uh, yeah, we could do Ribbon Down Nights and High Elves, but I've got I've got High Elf Force downstairs. I just like the Rohan. I was looking at my Grey Company the other day. I was like, should I get rid of it? Should I sell it? I, I do that, you know. I look at some of my old forces and I'm like, let's just sell it. And then I go, no, because I might use it one day. <laughs> yeah, and then, I'm, and then I started thinking, well, for the good of the channel, I should keep it because we need yeah, very You need very, very But You know, how often do I use it? And, and is a Grey Company really the best force to, to show the goodness of SPG or does it just show shooting? You know, so... Well, you can use it for themed games as the... Mm. So, Chocho Master Battle Cry versus Wobba Chica. Well, who would you want as your champion, and how, how should we do it? Yeah, how should we do it? Next up, we got Jason Matthews. Uh, thanks for answering my question last time. Loving battle companies, by the way. Everyone is. My question this week is about Groblog's special rule, Mithril Crown. If I use Fury, the special fate roll is passed on a five plus due to Groblog's Mithril Crown. But what would happen if I channel Fury? Would it then be passed on a four plus, or would it have no effect? Thanks again. I'm looking forward to more content and happy strategy battle gaming. This is in the rule book. It's in the rulebook. It doesn't make a difference. Basically, uh, if you were to channel it, it's still on a 5+, plus because it's coming from two different sources. The sort of the very rare occasion it might be worth it to do it is if you reckon Groblog's going to die early in the game. Let's say you're playing Taken Hold, mm -hmm. or uh, the one with the middle thing, whatever it's called, and Groblog comes on surrounded by the enemy, you might go, well, I might as well channel it with my Fury, my channel Fury, because Groblog's going to die soon. Explain to me the Mythical Crown rule. Mythical Crown is um, any goblins in range of fury are passed on a 5 plus. Oh, right, okay. So basically, if well, he's so around. When you, when you channel it, it just means that you're not having to cast it every turn. No, no, no. When you channel it, it's, ca it's passed on a 5 plus fury. Uh -huh. Okay. But with Groblog being there and having the Mythical Crown, it, with, when he's on the field, fury counts as being. essentially counts as being channeled regardless. Oh, really? So, so it's just that's why I've taken Groblog, because then the might you'd spend with the shamans on Fury can then be used for other things. Okay. But Groblog's a bit weak in combat. Okay. So you use that for you use them for the shatter and stuff like that? No no no. Right. <laughs> Less, this is less than time on, on the thing. Alright, so yeah, this gob is the goblin. <laughs> goblin shamans can cast Fury and Transfix. Yeah. If they cast Fury normally, it's on a six plus to save your guy. Yeah. If you did, with channel it, it's on a five plus. Is it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought when you channel you channel fury, that it meant that forever. it stayed forever. No, no, no. When like blinding light. No. Oh. Fury's an exhaustion spell, is it? Is, anyway. Yeah. Right, okay. And then when Grubbox there, it, essentially he makes the regular fury five plus, so they don't have to spend their might point to channel it to make it better. There was me thinking that channeled fury was like channel cast blinding light, and no, it made no. it the exhaustion spell. Now, Fury's on a 6+, plus. if you channel it, it's on a 5+. plus. Well, I've learned something today. Now you know. Now I know. Now I'm... Fury's well overpowered! <laughs> <laughs> it's well overpowered! Unbelievable. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, next up, we've got... Graham Sargent. Uh, the Sarge. He's put, Hi guys, good to see you recently at Throne of Skulls. I agree. Uh, I've been playing much on the Hobbit tournament circuit. I've not been playing much on the Hobbit I've not been playing much on the tournament circuit. Uh, but I've noticed in comparison with some other things I've been involved in that the community is, in my opinion, more open and friendly than any other system tournaments. Also, a far wider age mix. Do you think this is due to the general appeal of the Tolkien world and current movies, or for some other reason? Cheers, as always, and see you soon. I think so, actually. I think, I think everything. I think... Tolkien's world appeals to sort of most age ranges. People who can read. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the you movies have to be able to read to play 40k. Yeah. Oh! You burn war! That's it, the YouTube's getting <laughs> taken over. <laughs> uh, you need a bucket of dice, don't you? <laughs> Just a bucket of dice, bucket you of dice and you're done. You don't even need models. Um, the movies obviously popularised the, the brand and that brought people into the hobby. And I think the community as it is we sort of rib into those who try to power game and cheat the system so it's not in people's nature to want to be that person <laughs> <laughs> that is a load of rubbish 
Yeah. All right. No, my, my thing is, my, my opinion is, because it is a much smaller community, it means that, therefore, it can be a more personal community. So there are only certain ways, or there were only certain ways until very recently of sort of communicating with the community, and it was things like the Last Alliance and the One Ring. Yeah. And then with the emergence of the Great British Hobbit League, not the YouTube channel. Some people get confused between the Great British Hobbit League and the GBHL YouTube channel. Yeah. They are two separate things. Uh, it's nice that people feel that we represent the UK tournament scene. We're just active participants in it and we review it. Um, with that emerging, then you've got people coming together who might have only normally seen each other maybe once a year. Yeah. So seeing each other once a year, become, it's harder to make friends. Yeah. You might have one friend. You don't recognise that, like, hey, we drank last time. Yeah. Sort of thing, but... But now, you're seeing each other every couple of months, that means that you've got real true friendships. And when you've got friendships, and when people understand that we want this hobby to grow, it's important that it's friendly and inclusive, and that there aren't yeah. cliques. I and mean, I hate cliques, and I really hope that doesn't happen with our community. I hope everybody remains um, really welcoming, inclusive, and goes and sits on other tables, and welcomes those guys who might not feel as confident about coming and sitting on your table to come over. Very important. And I think that's what makes this community. It's smaller. There are less avenues to communicate with fellow players, um, so, but you've all already got that one thing in common, mm. you know, which is, I don't know, yeah. And, and the fact yeah. that the Tolkien universe in itself is morally amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's 40k, it's the grim, dark future, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's different. That's what I think. <laughs> Cheers as always and see you soon. Are, are you good? The Sarge, you've got to come to Stockport 2.0. Yeah. You've got to. I want you there. So bad. And hopefully we'll get a game. That'd be good. Yeah. Next up, we've got Kurt Leach. How many um, questions have we got this week? So many. We're on <laughs> 1 hour 15 already. Um, what do you think of this 500 point grad list? <laughs> uh, he needs to watch some Carno with Bo, probably maybe Surf God for Spears. Uh, we've got the General as the Betrayer on Armoured Horse, uh, 12 Watches of Carno with Bo, the Net Mumbo on Armoured Horse, and 12 Warriors of a Bracken with Spear. I'm yeah, um, it's small. But small for a 500 point list. You've got two is, raids. So. But you got two raids. I'd make the general the Knight of Umbar. Just because he's three might means he doesn't have the probability of rolling a double one on his fate rolls. And yeah. dying instantly. But, I guess he's put the Betrayer because the Betrayer would want to stay back with the Watchers of Karna and shoot. And shoot, yeah. But the, the Betrayer's really good in combat though. He re rolls all, re all failed wounds. Bane of Kings. Yeah. And what Lord of the Rings character do you think you are most like? Hmm. Did we assign ourselves uh, Lord of the Rings characters on a card once? Yeah, well, Who did we, you end up at? We, you were Gimli. We were doing it at the first <laughs> Gimli and Legolas. <laughs> Brilliant. <Yeah. laughs> I, I was quite happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah, you've been breaking on the fellowship. That's right, I was. Well done. What's, what's my pose? Mine's this, isn't it? That's breaking the fellowship one, yeah. With that axe. Axe. Weird, yeah. weird position. That's not my favourite Gimli. My favourite Gimli is the one. There's two of them where he's got his axe sort of He's got his axe down to the side as if he's bringing it up and over, isn't yeah, it? That's yeah, cool. that's a cool pose. Yeah. My ideal three hunters, I think, would be either Breaking of the Fellowship Aragorn or Three Hunters Aragorn. Breaking of the Fellowship Legolas, because yeah. that's a cool pose. Yeah. Um, and that Gimli. What yeah. is that Gimli? The one, you know the one I'm talking about. There's two which have got that pose. I think one of the ones is... is it like... One of them looks crap and yeah. the other one looks alright. No, I, don't, I don't know where they're from. What do you think that we're like? Yeah. Comment below. Let us know. Nick, speak friend and question. What, what Rohan? Oh, look what Rohan this. character might? What? Uh, what? What? Uh, Lord of the Rings character might? What Lord of the Rings character is Jamie? I think I said one man done them, don't they? <laughs> uh, yeah, possibly. Fried yeah. uh, so and Next up, we've got <clears throat> uh, Quinn Duggan. Uh, let's put James uh, Rohan Royal Guard aren't grey men when Boromir was through them more like red men lol yeah it's true yeah it's true he did make sure Boromir's awesome Boromir's <laughs> cool Boromir's awesome you know I'm looking forward to being an absolute next time I play him <laughs> yeah avoiding you, that's right um, Parthian shot in all the way around <laughs> Next up, we've got 19 Mark F91. Uh, hey guys, does Michelage, sorry if I'm incorrect, you got it right. Yeah, Michelage. Uh, not attend many tournaments, thanks, and happy strategy battle gaming. Uh, no, no, not as much as he'd like to. His work's quite prohibitive in the days he can get off, so he can't really make it to a few tournaments, and they're mainly the ones he doesn't have to travel too far to in London. He got a new job not that, not that long ago. Yeah, he's over in Europe at the moment, I think. Yeah, France very, very, very busy. He's actually asked for some help with the. Um, 
with the spreadsheets and just, the just keep it updated yeah yeah keeping everything going so uh, very nice guy if you get to meet him hopefully we'll see him at one of our tournaments yeah Next up, we've got Gongor, 1892. He's put, hi guys, have you seen the Foster's Rattlers ad where they play beach volleyball? In a weird way, the two guys <laughs> remind me a bit, a bit of you. I'm probably the only one who thinks so. No, I, I watched it afterwards and I thought that's quite it's funny. It's so funny. I was like, yep. Yeah, um, really but that advert is how I picture you two playing volleyball. Sorry, no proper question this week, but still wanted to say thanks for the great content and happy SBG. All of those adverts are really funny. Yeah. There's one last night on the World Cup, and it's the one, and they get phone calls basically from people wanting to solve problems. There's these two Australians sat in a beach shack, you know, the drinking fosters, yeah. and um, they get a phone call from some guy in the UK, mm-hmm. and he's like, "This, I've got a mate," and he keeps talking about the current socio-economic climate, and he said, "Right, what you need is you need this, <laughs> this paddle brush. It's got like a face on it." Mm-hmm. And the phone guy he goes, "Oh, thanks. Cheers for that, guys." After the advice is given. And the blonde one turns around and goes, yeah. yeah, it's a difficult one, that one. And he starts talking about the political thing and the guy in the dark just flings out the banner and went, oh, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Just check out all of those uh, those, yeah. those uh, like, adverts. Like less, they're less than a minute long. They're just so funny. Yeah, they're funny. They're good adverts. Um, just want to say thanks for the great content and happy SPG. Thank you so much. Next up, we've got... Larry Miller. Woohoo! Uh, you forgot to ask a question last week with all the throne of schoolsness. So I'm asking two this week. Realize. Maybe. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if we can. <laughs> uh, question the first. I've been playing. Oh no! I've been enjoying the battle companies thus far. Reminds me of when an, me and a friend played battle companies back in my salad days. What's a salad day? Is that a thing? I'm a nutritionist. I don't even know what a salad day is. <laughs> a salad day. That must be an autocorrect. Yeah. You back in my salad days. Is that like? My young days, maybe? Back in my green days? Back <laughs> in my green days? Back when you first died? And you're green maybe. Still, maybe. maybe, maybe. Let us know, Larry. Um, any chance of regulars like Steve et al? Well, look at you using your Oxford... Et <laughs> 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 yeah. al. But then spelling appearing wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Steve and others. Um, appearing with recurring companies of their own in later episodes. That'd be quite a cool thing. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. You like that idea, don't you? They just pop in every now and then. That'd be good. Definitely steal that idea. Uh, question the second is directed at James. When is that unboxing you and your roving reporter, Damien, filmed in the hotel going to be uploaded? Well, I had to have it screened by Jamie first. And, uh, you know, Jamie wasn't in it, so he wasn't impressed. <laughs> like, I think Stop. if you'd have been in that, that you'd have been like, let's get it up. But, you know, there, there yeah, are some, there's there's some, rude some, some, some Some rude references and, you know, but there are choice some, words. We don't swear in there. No, 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 no. No, okay. no, no. We don't. We don't swear. It's just that there's a lot of um, adult humour. Yeah, there's a lot insinuated by yeah. what we're saying, and a lot of adult humour. So this is a, a, a channel for all ages. What we might do is um, put it up, but with an age. Can you do that? Can we put up? How do you do that? Uh, I don't. Eighteen's no over video. I don't know. I have to check YouTube. Maybe. We'll check. We might either do that, or what we might do is actually put it in a list. And, and on the, post it unlisted to only those with the um, link can view the video. And then maybe put it up on the Facebook group. And then you can just share it with everyone and ruin that plan anyway. Yeah. Um, but that was funny. Uh, Bert Leach, he put, I think I missed the deadline a couple of weeks ago, so here's another attempt. It was a couple of weeks ago, you definitely missed the deadline. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that James is a fitness fanatic and a canny cavalry commander. I like this guy already. Uh, so I'd like to throw down a gauntlet. Oh. A three-legged tournament, to be exact. One leg would be a foot race of a distance of James's choosing, 400 metres or more. That's not your choosing. That was insane. That's like, that's like... The second would be a bat rep, uh, points of James's choosing. Are, are you calling me out, Bert? He is. Okay, so hang on. Uh, okay, so the second would be a bat rep, points of James's choosing, and naturally of the get buff uh, variety. Okay, and the third can be an appropriate challenge for the third time of James's choosing. I'm being called out. You are massively. Can't be sad. Both, both in fitness and in, in gaming you know, terms. Bert Leach, unless you're some kind of you know cross country champion, <laughs> uh, then yeah, let's do it. I'm quite good over five k. Fifteen minutes forty five is my PB over five k, which is very fast. Now, I'm not training for 5Ks at the moment, but if I went out and ran a 5K now, I'd probably do it in just under 18 and a half minutes, which is still pretty good. So if you can do it quicker than that, then 
I'll choose a different distance. <laughs> um, uh, bat reps, points of my choosing, get buff variety. Well, you know what? You tell me what you bring in, and I'll take you up on that, because otherwise you could just horrendously tailor against what you expect I would bring. So I'm at a disadvantage there. And the third could be an appropriate yeah, challenge you, for the you, third you, time you, at James's. You might, you might be at a disadvantage on the second one, because you don't know what you're probably going to bring, but then you get to completely choose the third challenge. That's true. So say 500 points as you normally do. That fight. <laughs> <laughs> we could do that first. <laughs> <laughs> Leg bar. <laughs> you love that stuff. It's good. It's cool stuff. Uh, I would love to come to Stockport and see you guys. We'd love you to come too, especially now that you called me out. Um, the channel has really helped me kickstart the hobby again on my own. Really good news. Thanks for all the amazing content, Bert, not a troll, or King of Kazadum from the uh, from or King of Kazad from the forums. I recognise that name. I recognise that name too. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, hope for well, Stockport two point zero last weekend of September. Last weekend, so yeah, it is. Yeah, get in your diaries and get ready to pounce oh when you're more questions. questions. Oh my god, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I can do that. We can do it. Okay, Dark Templar. I have now opened an account on the One Ring website and I've started trading posts. My username is Glarung. Is that you, Francis? Yep, Glarung. Yeah, Glarung. Uh, 98. My question is Do you think trading models on the site is safe? Why and why not? Would it be good to move high? Good to move to trade. Or would it be a good move to trade high cost models such as the Mahud King still sealed? I have done. Hmm. I have I been stunned before? Have I been stunned once? Uh, the, the, they've got. Um, I mean, it's, it's like anything. You, you've just got to trust the system and trust that most people and most people that are there will be like you and are trading fine. Best thing to do on the One Ring is they've got a rule, which is if you're trading with someone who hasn't had five successful and reviewed trades previously, then they have to send the item first. Or cough the money up first, yeah. Yeah, well, you can't buy things on the one. Well, yeah, Not like TLA. You pay, pay. Uh, TLA is the exact same. You can't pay. You can't, no. pay. You, can't pay. you can't transfer money through the site. It's got to be done by PayPal. And you, sort of you, you, can't, um, you can't negotiate buying oh, which is on the site. Oh, yeah, okay. they've got a complete base. It's a bit different to TLA. They've got a complete blanket ban on... Um, Purchasing is just trading. Yeah, just yeah. trade. Just trading. Um, so, I, I mean, I would trust it, but... And you know, the uh, best thing to do is go on there and ask the question. But you should be okay. Should be okay. Next up, we got Luke Lee Bruin. But hey, guys, my friend has just finished painting a Mumuk, and he'll be using it in our mini six-man league. Have you guys ever played against a Mumuk? Yeah. And how would you go about dealing with one? P.S. The armies are all five hundred points. Yeah, I played it twice. Killed it twice. Rumble. Yeah. Rumble. That's my that's my solution to most things. If you don't have Rumble, make really good use of the terrain. Um, you know, yeah, just wait until and you want to get the charge on it, mm -hmm. yeah. and heroic strike it and stuff. Don't let it trample your heroes. Yeah, you early. don't even need to heroic strike it. It's fight four. But if they've got the um, beastmaster on top, yeah, um, he's quite hard, isn't it? Does it use his stats in combat? I think it can do. Yeah. Oh yeah, it, 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 it's his mounts. That can it's his mounts that can use his yeah. stats. I think he is anyway. Um, yeah, trap it. You can't be trapped. Oh, it can't be trapped. No, it can't be. Cool. But yeah, I mean, they, they go down reasonably. Yeah, they, just, they take a while, but... You see, you wound it, it fails its courage, and you stampede it through their arm. Just don't deploy right in front of it. Yeah. Like, at the start of the game. It's all about heroic moves with yeah. um, the Gates and the Mucks. Yeah. Uh, next up, we've got Morgan Kant. Hey, guys, another great video this week. The question is... Uh, do you think you can make a Battle Companies tutorial video and possibly for a fun an all infantry Rohan army versus no bow infantry wood elves? No. No, it doesn't sound fun. No, it doesn't sound fun at all. <laughs> Sorry. But the uh, Battle Companies tutorial video is a good idea. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, we'll do that. Rohan, bows without, uh, elves without bows is rubbish. What's the point? I'd be just defence three rubbishness. You take away, all, unless I give them more throw weapons, but then no. 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 Sorry, Morgan. Why would we do that? Next up we've got George Downing. He's put, hi again, thanks for your suggestion on AI. I know this was always going to be the trickiest part of the code and that's why it's going to be mostly a multiplayer game. That makes yeah. sense, yeah. That makes sense. And that would be a good way of getting people to be able to have games of SBG um, when, when there's no one around. When there's no opponents. Yeah. It's to almost have a server set up where you play each other. Now, isn't War Machine doing this with War Machine Tactics? Uh, 
Possibly, I don't know. I don't and I think it's basically, I, but I don't think it is exactly the same as yeah, yeah. the game. I'm pretty sure I've seen that there's War Machine Tactics, it's basically War Machine, and it's a multiplayer game, which I guess you play on a server, yeah. and uh, you play against another opponent, and you basically play the game. And yeah. you've got models, and you move them as you would. Um, I think that that would be a very good idea. Mm. Multiplayer game and hosted server, but you couldn't make any money off it, otherwise you'd get done. Yeah. That's the one thing. It would have to be a completely free community unless, thing. Unless you rebranded it and renamed fair, everything. To be fair, even then you might have some trouble because... Using I'm, the game system put in place. Uh, it's not just that, because you think, well, you know, the game's there to be played and everything, like, and you're not making any money. Uh, but I remember when... Because there's, there's always been lots of sort of like Lord of the Rings mods for things. So I remember yeah. loving like uh, Rome Total War, or Total War, um, Middle Earth. The Third Age. Third Age mod. Yeah. Um, that was cool. Easy, but cool. And then I'm pretty sure that a group of people were making a mod for Skyrim to be like to be a, a Middle Earth, mm. and it l was going to be amazing. But they got loads of cease and desists, and they had to stop it. So even though they were doing something free, and they weren't going to be making any money off it, and it was a fan thing, it still got taken down. So mm. just don't tell anyone. Yes. Once it's up and running, it shouldn't be a problem. As long as you're not making money out of it. Yeah. So it has to be a free endeavour. Um, this week, yeah. my question? This week, my question is, what values uh, would change with shoot values and wound values if the game was played with a D10? For example, would you put an orc to have a shoot value of 8? Uh, also, I live in Hampshire and haven't had a game in ages. What do you suggest for me to do to get a game uh, if I don't know anyone in the hobby at all? Thanks. Constormants. Yeah, make the journey to the tournaments and then check on the One Ring uh, population finder. Stockport 2.0 is a must. Make the journey, it's well worth it. Um, in terms of shoot values? Uh, I don't know. For it's a D10. That's a big question. <laughs> I didn't think. Well, I'm not sure I'd want the game to be played on a D10. No? No. Would you? If it, were, if it had to be changed to a D10, then yeah, orcs usually over 8 is probably about right for them. I wouldn't want it to be D10. I like it nice and simple. Surely it'd be 9. If they usually hit on a 5 plus. You'd want them. Yeah, no. Yeah, it'd be 8. Yeah. And then when they move it to 9. Yeah. 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 Goblins maybe have them as 9 normally, and then 10 when they move. Yeah. 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 We'll do that. Next up, we've got our roving reporter, Damien O'Boone. Afternoon. Easy this week. Predictions for East Grinstead. Me. 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 Me, 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 me. Hopefully you will have uploaded the video the night before the tournament, so it should just be oh so topical. Jamie won the last East Grinstead event. Only because I let him. Yeah, he says. <laughs> <laughs> prove it, prove it. <laughs> you know it! You know it! Nah, I didn't. Yeah, you do! It um, doesn't matter anyway, yeah. what happened, happened. Yeah. You, got, you got a good score out of it. Hmm? You got a good score out of it. And that was the plan. Uh, Damien won the previous one, so we both know that Damien and I can make the conditions work. Ed's still number one in the league and always a threat, and if one of the three of us win, then it's going to be an incredibly powerful position for the league. Do you see anyone else causing a bit of an upset on Saturday, on Sunday? Do we? Yeah, I'm yeah, awesome. Probably both. Uh, keep up the good you work as I always. Will. <laughs> you hate it. <laughs> uh, you're both. You're both just super. We love you, Damien. P.S. James only read out half my question last week. Lazy. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> so you missed my awesome East Grinstead smack talk. So once again, I'm looking forward to watching you both clap when I pick up Tariel's knife on Sunday. Tariel's knife? Is that the prize? That's the prize, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a letter opener. I am winner of letter openers. Well, I'll tell you what. If I win the letter opener... Can I have it? I'll give it to you. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. But I want 100 league points more. Is <laughs> 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 that because you don't think you'll get away with it? Get away with... Having it with Jane around. Oh, <laughs> having it now. No, I would, but Toriel's blade doesn't really interest me. I don't know how much it means to you, so I probably would give that to you. I want the lead points. Mm -hmm. uh, and finally. It's not finally. Is, is it, it not? No, there's not one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Typical. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Tetchy Fiend. We met him at Tormund. Who's Tetchy Fiend? The name rings a bell, whether it's from a previous Speak Friend question or if it's someone well, I, I remember him, no, but I'm sure he said, I am Tetchy Fiend. Who was it? Who said, I am Tetchy Fiend? 
You put, hey guys, in your opinion, should I buy a free people's book even though now I have no interest in making a free people army at the tournament? Also, loved TOS and can't wait for the next tourney. Real men fight on tabletops. <laughs> who is Tetsu Fiend? Is it... Who is it? Let us know who you are, Tetsu Fiend. Tetsu Fiend, who are you? Is it, is it Sam McGuinness? Maybe. I don't know. That's a good shout. Yeah. If I'm, I'm probably wrong. <laughs> I'm probably wrong. <laughs> Tell um, us who you are. Yeah. And finally, we've got the last question. No, because I'm sure he already owned a free people's book. Yeah, he does. He, he used a free people's force that weekend. It's not something against. Okay, who is that? Let us know. I don't know. Let us know who you are. Uh, free people's books actually are production. It's not on the Games Virtual website. And it's, not, it's not there as temporarily out of stock now. It's just uh, no longer in If you want one, you have to buy it from me. Because I've got one to spare. But um, you just stick that on eBay for like 40 quid and just sit back. I, I was thinking for 50. So if you want to buy that, I'll take that. Mm. Finally, we've got Ginger360. He's put, Hi James and Jamie, thanks for answering my question, and I'll be sure to come visit you in Stockport for a game. No, now I know us newbies are welcome. You really are. Uh, and if you can make Stockport end of September, get it done. You can all turn up in your GBHL YouTube t-shirts, which you will have purchased before the end of this month, otherwise you won't be able to get them. Um, if you're waiting for dice, you're going to have to get the dice separately because we don't know when those dice are going to arrive. So get this t-shirt now. Okay, my question this week is can Isengard warbands play alongside mobile warbands or do they have to be separate? Mobile. Mobile warbands. Mobile. Mobile. Mobile warbands. Or do they have to be separated? Thanks, lads, and keep up the good work. Yeah, uh, everyone can align with everyone. Um, well, evil can evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Evil can evil. evil. What's e going on, Evil today? can evil can ally. What's going with on? Evil. <laughs> evil can ally with people. Yeah. Good can ally with good. Um, you can't mix the war bands together. Yeah. Although no. orcs do come in the Isengard faction anyway, so you they can do. mix them all up. They do indeed. And with that, that's been a long speak friend and question, so I hope you've got lots of painting done this week. Mm -hmm. um, or washing up. Or washing up. <laughs> or washing up if, you, if you're trying to get brownie points so you can make it to Stockport Tournament. Make sure that you send us an email to ilovewargaming at gmail.com and show us that this channel you know, and our subscribers do actually support us and want us to be able to make lots of content and make content even better. Uh, with 10 t-shirts sold, that doesn't make us very hopeful being able to upgrade our equipment and everything. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get you a camera. It, it, wouldn't, yeah, it, it wouldn't even do that. It wouldn't even do that. So um, we need that to increase by at least tenfold. Yeah. Not by ten, by tenfold. So get on it. Make sure you comment, like, share and subscribe. Support your hobby. And happy strategy battle gaming team.